out of that 30 billion. I personally just want one billion, just one. Just one and I'll be good. I won't ask for anything else, yeah? So you guys prepare your questions. Let me know what it is that you want to ask her. What do you feel we should ask her? Like, what's the one thing you think we should like, put on the spotlight for? enough is enough. I'd like you to expand on that. Just tell them what it is that made you say, I want to be Women County Rep for Nairobi. I want to change the lives of the young people in this city. I think um, if we all have to be honest, our country is not run properly. And the future doesn't look very good. And we've come from a bad past. We've, we're completely divided. And unemployment is a big issue. So for me, even if you start a business, you have an idea. I had a business. I had a brilliant idea. And look at it today. 90% of it has already been collapsed. I've been in court. I've been in court for seven out of 11 years. So I had a brilliant idea. Could have made me a billionaire. But because I was a woman, or because of corruption, it was curtailed. So I think I reached a point where I said, enough is enough. You know, and I'll, I, I'll tell you one thing, I was scared of getting back into politics, and Bakasi was quite a nasty experience. But I think I overcame my fear, fasting and prayer. And um, it feels right, you know? I think there's a right time for everything. There's a season for everything. Okay, speaking of unemployment, before we, we take any other questions, um, Generation Y is what consists of Nairobi. We are all Generation Y here. But Generation Y, we want it now. I mean, I want to drive that Mercedes back today. Um, I want to have the one million in my bank account today. But you see, the thing with Generation Y, we're the people, we have great ideas, as you said. And yet, sometimes we don't implement it. Yeah? And I'll give you an example of M. Shwari. Three years ago, I was sitting in a bar with someone, and the concept for M. Shwari, exactly as it is, is what it is now. Just speaking casual, uh, casually and saying, you know what, we should have a system like this. If you come in, if we all give you our votes here, I'd like to know, are we talking about fine, just making sure that we get the little that's there, or what will you do to nurture that talent, make sure we get those opportunities? Let me tell you, uh, there's, there's two levels. There's one where you're employed, not all of you are going to be self-employed, and then there's also the self-employed, and then there's also the unemployed. I think as a country, when we look at unemployment, we have to look at a way to subsidize it. You know, even if it's nothing else than food stamps. Because you can't have a, a, a whole population that's unemployed, right? Mother, fathers, children, and then you do nothing as a government, you know? So I think we need to look at unemployment, and if it's a problem that we can't fix, we come up with a solution. Then we have the employed. We need to make sure that the employed are paid according to, for me, women are paid less than men. I think it should be equal, all right? We've got the Bill of Rights. Women should earn just as much as the men if they're doing the same job. The next thing is the people that now going, who venture and decide, let's go into business and let's employ Kenyans. I have a problem with a government that gives so much incentives to foreigners to come and invest but nothing for local investors. If you come up with an idea and you have invested, you should also get the grace period of the guy who's coming in with the millions outside. Because even you're putting in your money, you're putting in your effort, you're putting in your idea. So I think in all those three levels, we need to find a way to harmonize and also educate and also assist. Because a government is there to help you as citizens. Anybody else who has a question to ask? First, I would like you to ask everybody, both the male and the female, or will it just be the women only? And then secondly, I, I thought you were an independent candidate, but thanks to my coming, I've noticed you running on the Kenya National Congress. So I also want you to tell us what directed you or in choosing a choice of party. Because before I thought you were much affiliated to the ODM side, so why Kenya National Congress? And men in parliament, I mean, we've hardly ever had elected women. Nairobi has 17 constituencies. I don't even know which women are standing. 
and I don't even know whether we'll have a woman that's elected, and I really pray that we will have one. So when you're voting, pay attention to that, so we can have more women in parliament. Women have always been nominated, all right? And right now, depending on how elections go, we might find that women and marginalized groups might not even get nominations. They normally give it, it's a reserve for their friends, you know, or the people that help them out, rather than what it's meant to be. The position of woman representative in government is uh, in the National Assembly. You've got 47 women that will come in via election. And those 47 women basically are going to be part of the legislation and part of the budget and part of the monitoring of expenditure. That's the actual job. So it's basically laws, formulating laws. But I want to go a step forward. I want to make sure that when we formulate laws, we understand the needs of the people and we also find a way to implement these laws and we also find a way to uh, do the civic ed education. There's no point in passing a law and nobody even knows that it exists. So that's going to be my main concern, to make sure that it's not just passing a law, it's implementing and doing the civic education. You asked a very valid question, who's going to vote for the woman rep? It's everybody. But look, most men are telling me that they thought only women are voting for the women rep. So that shows you that we've created this position when we inaugurated our constitution, we did civic education, but people still don't know that the woman rep is supposed to be voted. So one thing for sure, we have 47 women. But we were also supposed to have one third in the elected positions, right, in, 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 in the parliament. Now, unfortunately, they went to court and they basically said, it is impossible to find women. We will, not, we will have a constitutional crisis. All right, and these are men making these, these conversations and these discussions. And basically they said, let's stagger it. We wait. I mean, we've got 53% of the population being women. And we're saying we don't have enough women. It's true that women fear politics. I fear going back into politics. I'll be honest with you. The first thing my daughter said to me when she heard is, mommy, what if you die? You know? So it's, it's, a, it's a major concern because it does get violent out there. And it's, people are very, very, Lucky for me, it's, it's the woman representative, it's a woman against a woman, so I'm hoping that we're, a lot more, we're not going to be a lot more violent when it comes to trying to get that position at any cost. Yeah? So, um, if, in my opinion, um, men, women are also going to vote. And we need to spread that word around. We, need, we definitely need to tell men that this is not a position. Now, you asked about uh, why you thought I was an independent. Uh, does that make a difference? Uh, if I was an independent, you know, I hear this six-piece suit, you know, I, everybody's talking about the six-piece suit, and I hope I can convince you today not to vote six-piece, all right? Because if you vote six-piece, then you're like a blind man being led by another blind man, okay? So, um, why did I join? I, I'm not an independent, okay? Um, a, week, a week before they close uh, the party registers, I went to see Peter Kenner. I'd seen him on, on, on TV. I was quite impressed with him. I had made up my mind, I don't want to join. I quit ODM in 2008 uh, because I was so disappointed with the divisions in the party, with the tribalism as well that I witnessed in there. You know, I mean, you're part of a party and you, you don't feel that like you belong. And I think this is sad because I'm sure then another tribe that probably goes to PNU probably also feels the same way. And this is something that we need to fix. And I hope we fix it soon enough before it divides us even further. Um, so I went to give Peter Kenneth a boost because I heard what he said and I loved what he said. Uh, I've given a boost to Martha, I've given a boost to Ole Kayapi because I wanted Kenyans to have a choice. You know, uh, what is so sad is that the parties that have been there for long have got so much money, they already got funding from the government and so they have a head start. They're like way ahead. And then the others who are coming in have no money. So you are lured by the, and mesmerized by all that publicity and you think, oh, this is what Kenyans want. I don't think this is what Kenyans want. I think this is what Kenyans are convinced that they need. All right? So um, when I went to see Peter Kenneth, he was like, why aren't you standing? And I said, oh, I, I, I don't want. And he goes, well, why don't you? You know, I said, it's too late, not interested. And he goes, think about it. I don't have a woman rep, and I'd really love you to come in. So I said, uh, I started asking, who's the woman rep for ODM? Who's the woman rep for WIPER? And I wasn't getting any names. I called the parties and I asked them, and they didn't have any names. Now, I knew for sure I didn't want to get corded. Neither did I want to be jubilee, because um, unfortunately, you know what? When I joined ODM, I suffered a lot, and ODM was not able to protect me. Not that you join a party for protection. Um, I felt that if I joined ODM, and God happened forbid, jubilee means, then I am doomed. If I join Jubilee and um, 
or the M wins, I am doomed. I see tragedy on both sides. What I like about Peter Kenneth is it's neutral, you know, so I'm not going to uh, face the flag, though today I called uh, quite a few of my very, very prominent Kikuyu friends and all of them said, sorry, we're not supporting you. I wasn't surprised, right, because I think we're so brainwashed. We can't think of looking for a good leader. All we want to look is for our tribe. And for me, it's, it's sad. You know, I, I, you know, somebody said to me today, please add Mudoni to your name, you'll get more votes. And I said, I don't need to get votes because I'm Mudoni. <laughs> no, I did that in Embakasi. I regretted doing that. I was forced to do that. I was told you need the vote, you know? And I think it's wrong. Um, I would like to see a Kenya where the leaders of Kenya are not the reflection of a tribe. They're a reflection of good leadership. I want to sell myself to you as a woman who has a vision, a woman who is capable, a woman who has a track record, a woman who can give a chance to give you a better future. I don't want to sell a Kikuyu. I can't sell a Greek, so I'm kind of, you know. Um, I want to sell a Kenyan, a Kenyan woman, you know, and I want you to see me as a Kenyan woman. I don't want you to see me as a tribe. And I think that is sad because when we look at... Waila, we see Luos. When we look at Musalia, we see Luya. When we look at uh, Ruto, we see Kalenjin. When we look at Mus M uh, Kalonzo Musioka, we, look, we see Kamba. When we look at Uhuru, we see Kikuyu. I want to see a leader. I want you to watch the debate on the 11th. I want you to watch the debate on the 25th. I want you to make a decision based on the debate. I want you to make a decision based on track record. I want you to spread the word round that Kenya is bigger than the tribe. We have 43 tribes. I hear people saying, it's time for this tribe, it's time for that tribe, this tribe will never rule, this tribe. Come on, we're looking for a leader. We're looking for a president, for all the people. Let's not be divided tribally. And if you vote on election day because it's your tribe and not a good leader, I don't think your conscience can be clear. I have a feeling that you will live with that guilt of knowing that you're not truly a Kenyan. You are a tribe. So question yourselves. You know, our churches have failed to unite us and raise our values and raise our standards and raise our inspiration. We're all different. We have beautiful cultures. I went to see Jalambo recently uh, on Con Co uh, Co um, Comedy Corner. And I love the way he was saying it. He says, you know, this is me. But I'm Kenyan, you know, it was so beautiful the way he put it. Watch this uh, jokes, because the, they come, the artists are coming up and telling you, share your tribal skin. Stop, you know, I mean, I heard, I heard one of the vice presidents say that when you, go, when you go to an office, you will not be asked for your ID. Baloney. You will be asked for your ID because they ask it from the gate, you know, from the entrance. So for me, whether you're asked for your ID or not, whether you're Odiango or Juguna, it doesn't make a difference. You know, you should be proud of your tribe and you should not be victimized because of your tribe. I mean, how are you going to feel if after election day, Kikuyus win? Are you going to not do work with the Luos? Or if Luos win, are you not going to work with the Kikuyus? I mean, come on, why are we polarizing this hatred so much? Let's look at issues, let's look at development. Let's not have more violence come the fourth. Because you know what, you're all studying. You need to finish your degrees. We don't need violence. And I'm so proud of Nairobi University. You know, I remember once uh, somebody came to my, when I was working about 10, 10 or 15 years ago, I had a company called um, Sharp uh, Images. And a Nairobi University student come, came for an interview. And uh, some student from USIU came. And um, so did somebody from Desta, I think. And what happened is um, I told the Nairobi University student straight away that, I'm sorry, I can't employ you. And the guy goes, why? And I said, because you stoned me. You know, you stoned me. And you break all the lights on the highway. Why are you guys always on the road? I know we have issues, but there's a way to come out and communicate those issues. You know, and that's how we should be. And I'm so proud of you because you've not been misused. You know, you really are focusing on your education. Though I do remember Karl Marx. I kind of liked him, you know. <laughs> I did. You know, he was, he was, he was, he um, was, very, very, whatever, but he spoke, he spoke some sense, you know, but I think there was a better way to do it. And I admire the fact that you are now focusing on your education, focusing on how you can be a good citizen and make a good, 
make a good living, and contribute to the economy of this country. And then go back and pay back mom and dad, because they're making sacrifices for you to get that education. And I envy you. Most of you are going to get your degrees before me. I could have run for governor, but I don't have a degree. I have a bloody good business. I'm schooled in the school of experience. <laughs> I'm not really proud of my school, so don't ask me which school I come from. <laughs> so, yeah, but um, you, you, get, you get a lot of women, right, um, who go to college, and they have these difficulties that it gets to many points where they can't even support themselves. In other words, uh, in, in a way that you get uh, women who just join college, and they can't seem to even um, have hope of completing college simply because um, they had rather get maybe some placement to help them in uh, a sort of job which can help them pay the school fees and all those sort of things. And then if such a girl is in such a bad condition and you have a girl who hasn't even gone to college, I mean, it just defeats the purpose of working towards going to college. If you're just going to college and your life just becomes miserable as a girl, how are you going to do about that, Esther? I mean, I, I have heard, I mean, you have help. And I, I hear that help is, is there for you to get loans, all right? But I know it's probably not enough. And I also know that one of the biggest challenges is getting hostels, all right? And I also know that some of the families are really struggling to make those ends meet. I have a woman who spoke to me yesterday, and she said her daughter, she paid half the term's fees, and now her daughter's out of school because she doesn't have the remaining money. Um, I think we need to boost more efforts in health, and we need to make health fund all universities and all colleges, right? right? Not just specific universities. I think that's important. Uh, dropping out of school is something that can happen in any scenario for many reasons. But I think there should be a fallback plan, all right? And this is something that every individual should drive, but you should also look for initiatives. If we had initiatives where we can absorb you, it would be good. One of the things that I hear and makes me sad um, is about university students not so much dropping out, but university students being failed because they're probably not agreeing to go out with their lecturers. I've heard a bit about that. I've also heard about university students finding it so hard to sustain themselves in the capital city, so they also engage in side prostitution or being misused. Now, that is something that I think we need to address. And the student bodies in the university are the ones who should now come up with those issues and basically bring them forward to the leaders. Because all these things will require funding, and it's a question of priority. But what I think is also university students, you know, sometimes we look for government for all solutions. All right, if I raised 500 million from the private sector to light up Nairobi slums for the first time ever, right, you all can raise money to solve some of your problems. Because if we're going to wait for government whose Vision 2030 focus is infrastructure, infrastructure, and we're talking about road networks, then we might end up with the same problems 10 years down the road. Uh, number one, what makes you different from all the other women candidates uh, running in the race? Secondly, how can you hold you to account? Um, you see that um, other MPs have CDF for our other constituency, we can see development. Um, you'll be running it, you'll be in parliament per se, but you don't have a constituency. How can you hold you to account? Thank you. For MPs, I believe you can probably also recall your uh, county representatives. But I think you can hold your leaders accountable by five years down the line, if they haven't performed, kicking them out. Unfortunately, we don't do that in Kenya. We feel sorry for them, we get harmonized, we get incentivized, we get attracted to make the wrong decisions over and over again. I mean, I see some of the promises that you're being made today are the same promises you were made five years ago, all right? And the same promises you were made 20 years ago, and we're not getting any better. I mean, I was just thinking, why did we need to spend 300 million building the vice president a house? We could have rented him a nice mansion somewhere and use that money market in one of the constituencies, all right, so that we can help the women come out. We don't have the right focus. How you can make somebody accountable is after the five-year vote, don't vote bad leaders back. So right now when you're going out to vote, if you think there's a leader who hasn't performed, please don't return them, okay, because that will be an injustice to yourself, okay? Um, is that okay? Have I answered you? 
Yeah, what makes it different from the from oh, the run, the other women yeah. running? I only know one, Rachel Shebesh. She's been in Parliament for the last five years. Um, I wasn't very impressed with her asking for 9.3 million and fighting aggressively for it. Neither was I impressed with how she's turned into IEPC. Uh, I don't know what she did in the five years that she was nominated in Parliament. You see, you need to be businesslike to do things. I'm not going to look for budgets in the government to implement change in the constituencies. I'm going to implement change because I have a damn good brain. And I'm going to create jobs. You know, they talk about creating, they talk about creating one million jobs. And then they count the Joakali and say, look at the jobs we created. Hell, they never created the Joakali. The Joakali creates itself out of frustration and out of need to survive. I'll give you one idea that I have that's going to create 500,000 jobs. Okay? It's called hire a driver. Got a job, give a job. Everybody who has a car could hire a driver. I'm going to train drivers, women and men. I think we're going to reduce road carnage if we have more women driving. Okay? So, so basically, what I'd like to do is create driving schools in every constituency where people can go and train for free. You pay a registration fee, and then basically get all the corporates to agree to give people that work for them drivers and get people to actually feel the need to create jobs and uh, uh, shorten the gap between the employed and the unemployed. You see, I have a driver. It's so convenient. Let me tell you what. I can send my emails from the back of my car. I can text. I can call. I'm not breaking any law by talking on my phone. All right. And if the traffic act is going to be implemented, it's going to be more expensive to talk on the phone than to hire a driver. All right. When you hire a driver, you give someone else a job. But the biggest problem. I mean, I had a man saying to me the other day. My wife is not going to agree with me to have a woman driver. I said, do you have only men working in your house? And, you know, I mean, this is the thing. You know, we're going to have to get rid of all this stereotype thinking, but I think we have over 500,000 cars in Nairobi. If everyone hired a driver, we've got 500,000 jobs. Some, some of us have to and look at the economic saving. If you have a driver, he drops the wife to work, he drops the kids to school, he drops the husband at the same time. So what happens then? Right? You're saving petrol. You're saving the environment, you're saving your life, you're getting your job done. Every corporate in this country will hire a driver for their salespeople because they know when they're driving, they cannot be making sales calls. What do you think? Doable? And then I'll make a billion and somebody will get jealous, but what the heck? <laughs> this, this is me now asking the question that I'm up here. Are you allowed to? Yes, I'm allowed to. Okay. Are you a student? Yes, I am. Okay. You were saying, I'm Rimbo, by the way, I'm the person representing your state today. Okay. <laughs> okay, I said 500,000 jobs. We're all in university here, and um, most of us will graduate. All of us actually will graduate. That's the main point. Let's see. Um, statistics 15% of college or university graduates are the only ones who get employed. We have a deficit of 85%. Now, college is very expensive. Very expensive. And personally, when I get out of college, I want to be employed at a good place. Drivers, I don't want to be a driver, honestly. Two, sales people. But there are, there are millions of Kenyans that would want to be a driver rather than languishing in the slums and do nothing. Okay. And they are my concern. They're your concern. Okay, fine. Look at it this way. Um, SMEs contribute to 61 or something percent of this economy. You come in, we have the votes. Now, I have my voters card out here for you, and I tell you, I'm about to graduate, but I'll only vote for you, if you guarantee me that I'm going to get a job by the time I'm done, how are you going to do that? What I can guarantee you is that when I get into parliament, I'm going to be working on making stronger anti-corruption, stronger police force, more security in the country. And if we have those three ingredients, then obviously we're going to be able to have more investor confidence. But there's also another area that I really think we should, we should look into, importation. I mean, we import garlic. We import chickens, we import tilapia, we import 90% of our clothing, all right? We import so much at the expense of local industries. I've seen industries that employ so many people close down. Our cost of energy is very, very high. We need to reduce the cost of energy so we can be competitive. But I think the government also has to look at subsidizing industries so that there can be more jobs created. 
and you can get gainful gain employment. So I think we need the legislation and we need to implement. America, they came up with this campaign, Buy America, Be America. India came up with Made in India. There's a Hello? Hi. I'm Andrew I'm from KU. I'm Esther. Okay, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mine is about your strategy. I have three questions. You may have an issue with names in Kenya. Actually, we do have an issue with names. That most people are voting for people because they know these people, because they know the name. Uh, I would really like to use a crude example. I don't know if it will be allowed, but I would like to use an example of uh, Ferdinand and Jim, Nam Jim Nambaru. The fact Jim now wasn't voted in because his main, the, the people he aimed for, were us. He aimed for people in universities and he aimed for the middle class and the upper class. But Wajitu aimed for, let me say, the lower class, the Jokali people. And that's what uh, Santi say putting in. Are you ready to go to the middle class? They know you exist. We know you exist. But your main challenge would be, are you ready to convince them to go vote? Because if or to ask if or to ask people with voters cards, of course, women went to nominate their leaders. I'm pretty sure that it gets too many hands up. Are you going to convince the youth to vote for you come March 4th? And you can convince the middle class and the upper class. Are you ready to go to the slums, for instance, uh, Islands, the areas that are very that are really not known, like Salem, where I come from, which is a really small place in Islands. Are you ready to come to us and ask us to vote for you? Because we have youth who are waiting for people with great minds like you, people who will give them nice jobs. My um, second question is, what do you stand for? And my third is, like he said, Nairobi is the capital city. No, wait, not like he said, like we, are, we know. Nairobi <laughs> is the capital city of Kenya. And what he said was, if I was to lead a coup, which I am not, since I'm on the camera, if I was to lead a coup, I would have to capture Nairobi first. Now the problem is, in Kenya we're in a debt crisis. We're paying as much as 150 billion per year. Are you ready to help us get out of that debt crisis? Because, like you've said, the, the problems we are having, the insecurity, the lack of jobs, will still be there 10 years from now. If one, we do not sort the debt crisis. If two, Youth do not stand up and vote. And if three, enough women go to parliament to actually do politics, not talk. I'm not saying, I'm saying that with celebration, men, which I really should. <laughs> but that is what I'm doing. But you know what? I'm voting for Jim now. We are a candidate, we are a candidate for Kenya National Congress, but I'm not driven by my party. I'm driven by leadership. And I think Jim now has what it takes. To read him out. Okay? In advocacy, if you look at the numbers, what did you lost? But he won. He won in the Westlands. So he basically put a lot of people on the lines and basically took him out by 3,000 votes. Um, so if the constituency that advocacy that what you came from has rejected him, right? I have a feeling that we might get a surprise. Right now, we've already resolved that the governor of Nairobi is Waititu. Okay, we've already known that that's the perception. So who is our senator? And uh, until Esther gave you a choice, Shabash was supposed to be your woman rep. Okay, so now, I want you to understand something. Um, I saw the debate between uh, uh, Wilfred, uh, no, uh, what's his name, Kidero? Kidero and Waititu. I must say I was impressed with Waititu, not Kidero. If that was the only two candidates, I would have given YT to the vote. Then we had the empty chair situation, where YT to never showed up. And then I was impressed with Jimna. I know Jimna personally. All right? Jimna's probably not grassroots. All right? And he needs to find a way to become grassroots. Now you're talking about me venturing into the slums. I started venturing into the slums, and I've been to every slum in Nairobi when I started lighting with a dog's light. I would position the lights myself. And I, I interacted with people. I even learned how to eat men up on the road without thinking I was going to get sick, you know? So I've eaten in slum houses. I've been in people's houses. I've hugged women from the slums. I've picked up children from the slums. I gave up so many lollipops. And it was amazing how they fight for that lollipop because it was such a luxury. I didn't realize that. I gave lanterns to the women. So I know the slums, and I'm going to go there. Now I'll tell you what, I'm going to do another first. 
on Valentine's Day when you're all exchanging kisses and roses. <laughs> Since I don't have a Valentine yet, I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to be hopping from one fatata to another, going to every market in Nairobi. I've never been in a matatu. It's going to be an interesting experience. <laughs> so look out for me on the 14th. Love. God is love. And that's my greatest value. I genuinely love Kenya. And I genuinely love, love the Kenyan people. Another value that I have is honesty. I think it's important to be honest. It's easy for me to talk to you because I don't have any inhibitions. I can tell you anything. You can ask me any question. And I will give you a straight answer I because I about values. And I think honesty and love are very key for me. And gratitude. I think it's important to be grateful. When you wake up in the morning, just be grateful. Life is a gift. Don't take it for granted. So many have died today. You're alive. Just make the best of it. We will all have problems. The journey is up and down. That's why I'm running for this position. Uh, just so you know, you can, uh, at the end of this, you can uh, volunteer. Just need to register with Osh at the door. You can just go online. Okay, you. that's a tedious process, Alan. I, look, I'll tell you what. We don't have time. We've got 25 days. If you believe I should be your woman rep, I don't just need your vote. I need your vote and many, many other votes. I need you to go out there and tell as many Kenyans as possible to vote me in. One thing I can assure you, I'll be accessible. Second thing, I will do good. Not with government money, but with money that I will be able to get. I formed a foundation called the Driving Kenya Foundation and the one in the million, but unfortunately they refuse to register it. When I have that platform, it will be registered. And when it is registered, we will bridge the gap between the rich and the poor. If you want jobs, we've got to boost this economy. And I want to stop importing everything. I mean, South Sudan is importing chickens, frozen chicken from Brazil. Can you imagine if all of you had two cuckoos in your house and all we had to do is find a way to collect them and then we freeze, slaughter, freeze and export? Come on, how can you bring a chicken from Brazil to South Sudan and we're just neighbors? There's opportunity. The only thing is we're thinking in the box, not out of the box. How many, how many people here, first of all, shop from Jamia So far, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yeah? You know, you know me, me too, but it's also important. It comes from the EPZ. Please come down. Come down, come down. Please come down. I need you closer to me. I'm looking for a Valentine, so you might be lucky. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank Actually, close to 1.8 million registered voters in Nairobi. You know, I was thinking, not be selfish, Esther, share. So let me take 1 million and leave 700 for the rest. <laughs> you need to go out there and spread the word. Tell the men that they can vote. It's not a woman only vote. Tell the men and the women out there, don't vote six space. Let's listen to the debate. Give every leader a chance. They've spent so much money and time. Sometimes I look at Martha on the TV and I feel, my goodness, Martha, you started seven, eight months ago. She's exhausted. If you think that she's got the what it takes, give her the vote. If you think Peter Cannon's got what it takes, give him the vote. If you think Ole Kayaki's got what it takes, give him the vote. People say don't waste your vote. Let me tell you something. You're not wasting your vote. You're making a statement. You're making a statement about what you want. It's not wasting your vote. If you think who deserves it, give it to him. But don't give it to him to save him from the ICC. Give it to him because he deserves it. Right? If you think Ryder, Ryder deserves, if you want to give Ryder your vote, don't give it to him because he's low and low has never been president. Give it to him because he's the man who can do the job. All right? Let's just let's focus on leadership. Let's not be skewed towards thinking in one direction that's not right for Kenya. And let me tell you something. I mean, will you see them again until five years down the line? Will they hear you? I've seen manifestos. I remember telling Kibaki off once. Because I said to him, I said, uh, in an interview with BBC, they asked me what did I think of the Kibaki government. And I said, he never dealt with corruption. It was one of, he had zero tolerance on his list of things to do. But unfortunately, as soon as he read his speech at the World Park, he either suffered from amnesia and forgot about the zero tolerance to corruption, because we've got a weaker anti-corruption right now as he exits office, 
But unfortunately for the road infrastructure, we can't even that. I mean, he's done work there, but he hasn't done it alone. He's done it with the prime minister because it's a it's a it's a it's a coalition government. Yeah, but I don't see the prime minister getting any credit because at the end of the day, they're just launching all these books about my legacy, my legacy, my legacy. Your legacy includes IDPs. I didn't see that on the legacy book. You know, so let's face it. You know, let people talk honestly. Let's talk straight. Let's not sugarcoat things and make things look rosier than they are. You're intelligent, man. Your brains are the same size as Bill Gates. Use them. Don't be made to do the wrong thing and think the wrong way. Kenyan first, tribe second. Uh, hi, uh, I have a question for you. I would as well like you to be the women read by 11 a.m. But I'm trying to wonder, what is your strategy? How are you going to read the people in the slums and all that within these 25 days? Okay, as I was walking around Nairobi, I was seeing some photos of funny people I don't even know. I only know Shebesh among them. And I was wondering, whom am I going to vote for? And I decided I'm not going to vote for anybody a woman because I don't have to vote. I can vote for the rest and leave that out. So when my friend Nimo told me about Basari's want to be the woman, I was like, yes, now I have my woman I also tried to convince some few people. But I'm also worried. <laughs> we have to work on Faith, this. not fear. Faith, not you fear. Know, <laughs> politics is all about numbers. Okay, listen, you know, why not tell you about faith, not fear? Yesterday when I got into my bathtub, I just burst out crying. I was like, God, what am I getting myself into? Because I rang a billionaire, an Indian billionaire, and I said, look, every day that I go out, it's going to cost me half a million. When I go on a road show, right, I really need your help. And he calls me the next day and he says, pick up 25,000 for my office. <laughs> you know, I was so angry, but because I'm such a grateful person, this morning I woke up and I thought to myself, hell, go pick up the 25,000 and pay for the fuel, <laughs> you know? So, so the thing is, it's very expensive, all right? It's very expensive. Kenya National Congress Party is not as rich as um, Jubilee or ODM. Not that they're spending any money on, the, on, their, on their, uh, the people that they've put in their parties. They're not spending any money. They're just spending money on getting crowds and creating Hype, 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 hype. You know, you're being brainwashed by the media. Um, I wonder sometimes if there's a magician behind those screens that's actually hypnotizing all of us to think and vote one way. Look, the word of mouth is very, very powerful, but I'm not doing nothing, okay? I've got radio commercials. It's amazing, I've spoken to so many radio stations today and they're all gonna air my commercials for, for free, you know, and that's fantastic. <laughs> I haven't got a citizen yet, but I'm hoping that this is my Sharia and is gonna support me. As a fellow woman, I, I hope we'll miss my Sharia. You know, the woman always knows how to get the man doing things. All right? Uh, so I'm hoping that he's, he endorsed and said, Raila, you know, so I'm hoping that she will endorse. <laughs> I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk to her. But I'll tell you one thing if it's meant to be, it will be. If we do our best and fail, we're not failures. Do you know what I mean? So if it's meant to be, it will be. I think it's meant to be. I believe it's meant to be. I have all of you here. That's a sign. That's a sign. And if, 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 if every one of you can talk to 10 people every day, we'll get our million. We need a million. And we have to talk to the ones that, you know, talk to anyone. If you mind bothering or someone, just tell the person. If you, you know, in every interaction, pray, pray is good. You know, last night I'm telling you, I got into my bathroom and I just started crying. I said, what the heck, man? You know, and in the morning I woke up and I was grateful. And today, after such a beautiful day, you know, I am gonna have my silent moment with God and just say thank you. I've had a beautiful day, and this is an amazing rep. And I can't wait to see the movie because I've heard so much about it. I love Nairobi Half Life. The other day I called it High Life. And that's what my my IT guy he corrected this immediately. Um, don't worry. All right. Just you you gotta believe in something. Remember Jesus said you you have to have faith. You know? So let's have faith and let's work for it. But we've got to work for it. If you open your mouth and greet someone and don't say extra basaris, my dear, you've lost your support. Okay? <laughs> Alright. Madam sounds a bit too much. You see the gentleman that you call me Esther. Right. That's Madam only says five million that we gave my sister here. Uh-huh. When this lands. Uh-huh. A simple question, I'm sorry. You understand this way? Sindio. Hi, Pendere. Sama 
What strategies you can find in that you confuse people, irritate people in the slums that you work for them. In that, first up, in fact, they don't want to go to the African woman. They say, these are Muzungu seeking for God. You understand what you're talking about? Okay, exactly. What they're talking about is Peter Kenneth. I mean, she's done everything. The roads, water, electricity, but they organize that man as a Muzungu. <laughs> From first appearance. So that's why you tell me I'm talking about first appearance for the illiterate. Ni Muzungu. So my name is Ida Kama Sisi. When you get up, when you get on here, hey, my name is Muzungu. You know, you know this guy African, African English. Somebody may speak and say, yeah, yeah, this is an African lady, but she's all that brownish. But just how, how do you convince the public that you go down in that little people, in the slums, that you seek votes from the slums, how you help them? How, how, how? No, yeah, in Kiswahili, you tend to be a politician, you're a Uh, my name is Nedrin, proud to be in the state university. You are? Yes. Uh, my question is, you've talked about being accessible. How exactly are you going to be accessible? Do you have an open door policy? How do you get to, how do we get to wear our items to you? Because one of the major problems that has been there with the previous, um, the previous leadership is that they perceive them as generation Y to be superficial, but what happens is that we have no one to listen to us. So how exactly do we get to Esther? I was invited to almost every university in this country to give a talk, and I did go. I didn't have to. I went and talked to MBA students, and they felt I'd done the big book. So I intend to, so that the next time I'm not caught with my pants down, I will have a degree. Um, I decided that I will need a constituency office in every constituency. I don't think the government is going to fund that. I'm going to try and get private sector to fund that. Do you know, I went to, when I was in Europe recently, I saw Oxfam. Oxfam is, uh, they, they try and sell second-hand clothes and stuff in shops, and all the shops that they have, the buildings that they have, have been given to them for free. And then they sell the second-hand stuff, and then they use that money to help the poor. Now, when you say open door policy, I don't want to lie to you and tell you that you can just walk into my office. All right. I want to tell you that I'm going to be accessible to groups. It's going to be very difficult to be accessible to individuals. But you want to know how accessible I am? You've got a student amongst you who accessed me. All right. And I think she will tell you how accessible I was. I mean, Evangeline, why don't you tell them your story and how you and I met? And how, how accessible was I to you? And how accessible am I to you uh, up to now? Okay, uh, I met Esther around uh, probably eight years ago. And at the time, I, really, I was really in that need of her to come and help me through my school. And uh, she wasn't that kind of person who wanted to go and like, she asked you where you're from, what you want, and all that stuff. She'll just like, just let you in. She, you won't like call her and she'll like hang up on you and tell you, no, you know, I can't see you today, or uh, you just see me after like three months. She's not kind of leader that she would call. Not necessarily call and she maybe like ask you to go and see her maybe in her office and she won't be there. Or like she won't call you back. She will always call you back and tell you, you know what? I might not be there at this time, but I will be there at six. And even up to date, no matter like I'm in a situation where like I need to call her, I always call her up or I text her. Mostly I do text her. And when I text her, she will always have time to reply. And then it's not like, uh, like she'll maybe like text me maybe once in a while and tell me, uh, 
Eva, how are you doing? How is school? And that is the kind of deal I think we all need. Someone we can just easily access, talk to, and she always has time to like, text you back. I almost thought people like say, I'm in Simukuru, I'm in Sim, maybe Raila, because they went to Uhuru Park or some kind of you know, hall and so you choose me as a leader and I will create jobs for you and you go to their office Monday to Friday and you never find them. You can't even accept their numbers, you can't even call them. But anytime when you call them, I mean, you, you have to like, pass through 20 people to get to them. And more than likely, most of us have never been really going to them. In the maybe 10 years, you, maybe they've been leaders. But I can say, with my experience, she's always had time to like create time. Maybe not every day of the year, maybe not every day of the month, but anytime, I know, I can attest to that, anytime I text her, whatever it is, it may be something so out of the blue, like, hey, how are you doing? How's everything? Or, hey, I need this. And she always text back. So I could attest and say, when I met her eight years ago, I didn't think maybe like, Right now, I still be chatting with her. Honestly, I think. But I mean, it's like it's so many years ago, but we still talk, and she always have that open heart to like just let you in. She never trusts me, and I'm not saying this because I give you guys to vote for her or because I know her. I just say this and just go away, lie. But seriously speaking, she's always that person who will always be there. And so many people have met. I'm not the only one. I've met a lady, Sandra. And she had the same thing to tell me about it. She's like, you know, Esther, she's just this person you talk to and she listens. And I think that's what you need in a leader. You need to know that maybe you'll have a leader, you'll have an idea like, I need to like have a kibanda for skuma and nyanya. And she'll take time to listen. And not only listen to those who can say, you know, I need to fix this company. Because I'm shocked when people say that they don't know about her and her work in the slums. The majority of the projects she has supported is not in the middle class. It's basically in the slums. That's where she's known. You think the middle class know Esther, but the people who actually know Esther are the guys in the slums, because that is where she was, and that is where she's had all her projects going. So you'll go for a leader who, believe me, will always be accessible for you. You'll go to her office that one time, and you'll have her. She may not be there, but she will always get back to you. So. I think we should, um, we should take a break and uh, based on the two debates, based on track record, not based on tribe and polarization that's going on in our country right now. Um, do we have consensus that we watch the movie? Yes. Yeah, because I'm dying to see it as well. Yeah? Alright, thank you so much up to now and um, yeah, let's get started.